I'm visiting uh, Deborah Barb Raymond today. Hi, Deb. Hey. And uh, we're looking at her new body of work, which is going up in exhibition next week. And I was curious to ask Deborah about this body of work, and so she agreed to uh, do this so that we all can enjoy the answer. So tell me about the body of work, Deb, how it represents you, and I really like to know how it falls in context with your soul's journey, uh, your current spirit, and uh, possibly issues of past life regression, which I know you're very interested in. Okay. I um, found myself without any materials to work with, except for some mylar one day. And I taped it up to the wall, and I found some old photographs of clowns that were fascinating. And I thought, I need to get back to the foundation of painting. So I started drawing on the mylar with graphite. And I remembered a technique that I teach my students of uh, putting... Um, turpentine on graphite to make it move like paint or ink and I found it an awesome way to draw as well so I took several of the drawings that I had done and I mounted them on boards that were gessoed white so that it became a layer between the gessoed board and then the mylar and then the drawing. I felt they weren't done, they weren't finished, I kept looking at them and going I, I want to put something on them and I remembered resin and I loved the look and finish of resin. It's like looking in a mirror or a glass. You see the reflection kind of in it. And I had silver dust. So I started working with the silver dust, putting it on with liquid and dripping turpentine into the silver dust and moving it around, um, making drips and textures with the paint on top of the resin. And then I will do um, sometimes a schematic or do some line work in the drawing and then I'll do another coat of resin. So there are suspended layers of paint, drawing, silver dust, and um, mylar. And Deborah, what does the clowns represent for you? Um, they represent the juxtaposition between happy and sad, mad and glad, black and white, um, the different emotional qualities that people have throughout their life and throughout um, sometimes many lifetimes, how we carry through from one life to another with like a repeating pattern. People will repeat their actions and their reactions to people. They'll be drawn to situations and keep making the same mistakes. And or they will bounce off and do the complete opposite. They're doing a, um, you know, the, they have an ex extremely sad life and they bounce to an extremely happy life. Um, or they might do a rerun. Like I said, they go back and forth. I'm fascinated by the human psyche and consciousness, and I've done a lot of consciousness studies, and I love the fact that history repeats itself. History isn't stagnant. It's always moving forward. It's um, a word of action, and I'm fascinated by old photographs of clowns. There's a certain um, nostalgic quality to them, and that's why I liked using the graphite and drawing with the graphite, going back to the foundation of um, painting and then painting on top of the, the mylar and the resin. Um, the old clowns represent different emotions and reactions for me. You know, a painting is always about the artist, even if they say it's not. And I wholeheartedly believe that. I look at bo bodies of my work going from children's issues to doing a series about myself and coming to terms with my relapsing, remitting MS, which has been a big, you know, turn in my life, and I'm learning to adjust and to adapt to that. Um, the clowns show and represent a lot of different emotional you know states of being and there will be days where I'm really full of energy and ready to go and days where I'm really down and just want to sleep and so the clowns do represent me they are part of you know the psychological evolution of my soul's journey and as far as past life work goes it's my fascination with history mostly for the clown it, um, series and I'm looking at them as a way for other people to be able to dig deeper into their subconscious mind and become aware of things that they're hiding from or they're um, shielding themselves from or they're ignoring or denying to you know kind of embrace all that is humanity which is not just white and not just black it's all those grays and emotional qualities in between <laughs> How do you live with this stuff? <laughs> I'm surrounded by clowns. It gets kind of claustrophobic because they are kind of big. Um, 
but I love doing big work and I had gotten away from it for a long time. The bigger the better, and I also like to represent myself with challenges. So I came up with this technique by accident, and by default, like I said earlier. Um, and I've been pushing myself to take it a little farther and a little farther and explore with the materials just a little bit more and, uh, you know, let it drip, let it run, let it um, cover. The, and the, the resin is a whole process in and of itself. It takes me into kind of a meditative state, with the pouring and then the dragging of the resin. And then I get out my blowtorch and I go over it to get all the bubbles out. It makes the pieces heavy, but it also gives them that multi-layered um, visual dialogue that I'm trying to express in them that I couldn't do on just a flat surface. So the layering is like one coat of resin is like 50 coats of gloss medium. So when you put two coats of resin on there, it's like a hundred coats of gloss medium. And it's reflective. The person standing in front of it can see themselves in the piece as well. So Deborah, I was wondering uh, how much of this has come from the thinking mind and how much of this comes from the spirit? A lot of it comes from spirit. I don't always know what I'm doing, and I don't know that it's going to come out. I um, trust the materials and trust the process and kind of take leaps of faith and experiment, explore. It's kind of an inner exploration as well as a visual dialogue expression and trying to create something that's visually beautiful but also um, intellectually challenging. I know a lot of people are afraid of clowns or they don't like clowns or they see my, this series as being depressing, and I don't mean it to be that way. But I think that um, our state of being in our world today needs kind of a wake-up call, and we keep repeating things. So the clowns in history and the emotions that people have throughout the day, I think this is humanity right here, that we fight with ourselves, we put on fake faces, we cry tears that no one else sees, we um, have an inner life that isn't always expressed. So I think I'm trying to do that through the clown series. And I wanted to ask you, uh, Deborah, what do you do to renew your spirit daily? I love to paint. I love to draw. Um, the paintings are a release. They're an emotional um, expression of myself in the moment during that daytime. And even if I'm you know, frustrated or I'm upset or I'm sad, I find joy and um, a sense of peace and overall, you know, meditative state when I go into my thinkings and my drawings. Which is your favorite clown? I really like the expression on the face. I like the way the pattern of the um, clothing he's wearing. I like the layers in the face. It's probably one of the most extreme. And the contrast between the blue and the black and white. The facial expression and the body language. Who is Deborah Barr Brayman? Oh, <laughs> what a question. Um, I've been a mother, I've been a friend, I've been a wife. I feel like I've led many lifetimes just in this lifetime. Um, I'm an artist. I'm an artist first, and then I'm a teacher. I think I have to pursue my artistic passion and venue in order to be a good teacher. And I'm not done yet. I think I have a lot of work to go.